Before we get started, I thought I'm going to let you in on a little project I've been working on. I've been very inspired by Meg, Meg Twin, whom I'm following on her channel. You should do as well, of course. And she is posting kind of progress reports on little bits and pieces that she does with Unreal Engine. And I'm very inspired by that because I looked into Unreal Engine about a year or so ago, or two years even ago, and I keep a hand in for other things than game development, but I do know a little bit of the logic and all that, and one of my secret passions was always to make a little farming game. So I thought I'm going to let you know what I cobbled together here yesterday, um, yesterday late that night. So this is what it looks like. It's built with a uh, small pack that is available for free currently on the epic marketplace and i'll go and show you what i've done here then we can go and look through the through the level through the assets here i've used the first person template here and um, just put that in took took some of the of the uh, what's it called here the or the shooting mechanic out so the only thing that is still available is that little crosshair here and this is just on one hand a little test to walk through the environment here to check it out to check out the demo level and uh, hopefully not getting too far away from where i actually need to do my thing i might redo things so this is just the demo level that came with it but i thought hey that's just as nice as the sinti set i might as well just go and play with that a little bit i would, might might probably redo the water here with the water plug-in in a real engine so what i've done is first of all i've taken out the weapon then i've implemented sprint so that i can hold down the shift key and then run around so i was very pleased that i remember how to do that and then the big thing is it being a farming game and stuff i've taken a look at these little cabbages here so i've i've amended the material a little bit that, that there's a little bit of movement in there it doesn't work fantastic yet but it just makes this thing just move a little bit with the materials what i really have done is create this plant bed here in blender i mean it really isn't anything special and i don't think i want to use these things but what i do want to do is have something that lets me plant my cabbages and this is the exciting bit that's what i've done see that little crosshair here the the red thing that i need to gonna go and play with if i go and press c then i can go and grab and plant these cabbages here there's the line trace that i'm using to make that happen i had great difficulty with that before i'll show you the code in a minute so i can go and press the c button anywhere here in this planter when i'm on the planter if i try to do that here then it doesn't work it just gets comes up with a message and not here as in you can't plant here but yeah so a few bits and pieces that i had issues with was in fact making sure the line trace ends where my where my crosshair is on the screen so it does that now and i never knew how to do that so now i do and then the planting mechanic i think i've already shown you this in a previous video on my main channel that uh how i do that and i kind of just recreated that so one of those things hey mr brian how you doing i haven't gone i haven't done the lockers yet but you know that's maybe something for a little bit later mr jeremy how's it going good to see you guys so yes, that's what I've been working uh, on yesterday, and I sh I thought as a little progress report, let's go and plant a couple more cabbages here. So I can't pick them up yet, that's the next thing that I want to do, and then of course there should be a mechanic that only lets me plant cabbages when I actually have cabbage seeds, and then I'll go and, you know, be able to plant other vegetables as time goes on. These patches of land here, they might actually be perfect for that so these are all the vegetables that come with this asset pack and i thought maybe i'll go and take all these things out and instead have the player find like a box of seeds or something so that you can grow your own giant um what are they called pumpkins here <laughs> so i just literally just expand this so these are all the cabbages here it's funny that when i amended the material for this to move it just you know makes everything movable now so that's kind of that's kind of cool so currently we have carrots and we have cabbages and we have pumpkins and we have one more carrot I'll, I'll see there's also i think somewhere further in the middle of this level here i might use this not this i might have the player get some water from here uh, there is something else like a like a little oh it looked like i forgot where that is now I'm new to this. There's somewhere. Is it over here? It might be over here. Yes, here. I might have the player just go and um, put their put their cabbages and all their bits and pieces here. So I might just, you know, change this out so that you can deliver the cabbages here, and then you get cash with which you can then buy more seeds or I don't know, buy a Ferrari or whatever. I'll I'll see. I'll see how I handle that. And then of course we need to have an inventory and all that. But that's you know that's all in the planning. So maybe I'll I'll implement that as I as I understand how that works. 
So let me just uh, give you a little... It is nice, isn't it, Jeremy? I thought so too, yes. And and lockers, definitely, um, Brian. There's definitely going to be lockers in there. Let me just show you how I did this bit by bit. So on the first hand, so that I don't forget, and you can recreate it if you like. In the construction script, I've removed everything and set the walk speed of the character to normal 300. That's base walk speed. And then I'm just grabbing a reference to all my planter objects here. That's just so that I can do something with it later. That's all I'm doing in the construction script. On the viewport here, I've literally just removed the arms and the and the kind of the firing mechanic here. That was also on the event graph. So I've just removed that, all the VR stuff, that all that cruft is now no longer in there. The jumping was already implemented. Mouse input and jump input. So sprint, this is how I've done it. I've literally set up a key like the shift key and I'm just overriding that. If that is pressed, I'm overriding the max walk speed to 600. And then if it's released, then I'll go back to 300 so that we can just walk with the character. So that's what I've done. Then I've implemented a plant vegetable thing that I was going to put on a function. But it turns out Unreal Engine doesn't let me use a timeline inside a function. So these are the functions here. Plant cabbage, that is um, uh, a thing that is now not a function. This is now a proper What's it called? A graph, essentially. So plant cabbage. No, actually plant cabbage, that was just, no, that I could do that as a function. I'm so sorry. This is actually a function. <laughs> the timeline was that's actually on the cabbage object that grows. So I'll, I'll show you that. This thing just checks, are we pressing the C key or whatever it takes to uh, plant a cabbage? And then we just go and call that function. It is a function. In the function, this is a little bit tricky. This is a line trace here. So it comes from here. We grab a first person camera object from here and in it we get the world location as a starting point and to it we add kind of the the, the length of the line so we first we get the forward vector via the world rotation then we calculate the length of the line in my case it's like thousand pixels or whatever and we add that to a starting vector and that then lets us draw a line between the start of my camera object and the end of that vector. And then we'll go and say uh, we need to trace complex because otherwise my planter object isn't going to have the cabbage grow on the on the actual plane but slightly above it at the collision box. So we don't want that. That's, that's just if there's a little gap between me putting the line and saying trace complex that that'll just make it start exactly where that accurate collision is. Takes a little bit more, um, what's it called? resources but that's okay there's also a debug line i think i can go and switch that off here but i'll leave that in for in place for now then on the out hit of that line trace by channel i'm breaking the hit result apart and i'm taking the hit actor and i'm casting it to my plant bed so i'm hoping that the plant bed is hit or whatever object i want to intersect with on the line trace so i'm grabbing that out if the cast failed then it isn't a plant bed and it is something else that I've hit, like the ground or house or whatever. In this, in this case, I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying, you know, you can't plant here. And if it is actually successful, then I'm spawning a cabbage actor. And I'm spawning that literally at the impact point, which is then translated to, uh, to transform rather than a location. So Unreal Engine kind of offered that automatically, which is kind of nice. And I'm also printing a little message that says plant the cabbage. So that is that that lets us put something there. Then, of course, I went a step further and thought, hey, this is awesome. In the plant, in the cabbage object itself, um, st I'm starting at event begin play. So that's this little cabbage blueprint that I've made somewhere. This one here, that's that. Plant bed, I don't think that has any logic in it, but the cabbage has this in it. So the cabbage says, if you start, then start growing immediately. So in the there's a growth template here. That's the timeline that we'll look at in a minute. Construction script is literally just starting my little cabbage at a smaller size. I'm using the set world scale to 10% of its original size so that it starts small. So if I wouldn't do anything else, there's a little tiny cabbage that gets planted. That's that's what I'm that's how I'm doing that. Then in the event graph, uh, this is where I couldn't use the timeline inside a function. Otherwise, I would have split that out into a function here. So I'm, I just use the custom event instead. I'm, I'm calling it grow plant. 
which starts the moment we begin place. That kicks off a timeline here. Timeline interpolates over a certain amount of seconds. I think I'm using 20 seconds here, in which I'm going from 0.1, same size I've used in order to make that, to plant that little guy small. And then I'm just interpolating over 20 seconds to a value of one. That's what the timeline does. And then the timeline goes and updates the plant size. And that is what I'm continuously putting into the new scale of my object. So static mesh, that is the uh, that is my cabbage object here. And then I'm going to increase that to that new scale. And once it's finished, I'm using a callback to do something with later. That's one of these things, the event dispatches. That's just um, what I'm calling. And then I can react to that. So I can then go and spawn something like a fruit, like on a tomato plant, for example, the tomato plant would grow. And once it's grown, I can then go and wait another whatever minute or two minutes for a tomato to to appear. And then I don't harvest the plant, I harvest the actual fruit on there. So that's kind of, you know, that's, that's coming. But yeah, that's what I have so far. And I thought I'm going to give you a little update as I as I expand the project, both for your, um, for your, you know, behind the scenes looking things at, as well as for me to remember, how did I do that? So there we go. That's Jay's Farm 2022, made with the Greenwood Fantasy Village assets. That's kind of cool. So yeah, I'm hoping to to expand that into into exciting things. Nothing fancy, so it's not going to be a, a game anyone really wants to play. I just want to really see if I can put something like a HUD effect there, like at the bottom left, that I can that shows me how many how many seeds I actually have. Then I want to make sure the player can go and plant different things. Maybe you have to wait for different conditions for these things to plant, and then hopefully it's not going to happen in a plant bed. It's going to happen more in a kind of in a you know. In a, in a different part of the level and once again i might not even use these assets i might just use a, the sinti farm asset for that but i think that's kind of, that's kind of nice so one of the things that i came across while these things are growing it doesn't really i can i can literally plant lots of them here in very small uh, proximity to one another and then of course they all grow into one another so i'm going to see if maybe not all of them come out properly like if they do intersect then they either come out crooked or i'm going to have to delete some of them so that when you plant five things too close to one another maybe only one or two will survive that's an easy mechanic to do there with collision checking as these things grow yeah because otherwise i want to kind of avoid stuff like this and then of course the picking up the harvesting harvesting mechanic is going to be there as well so more news as it breaks from jay's farm <laughs>